If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, as the screen is going up. There's a scripture that, if you've memorized scriptures through your life, you've probably memorized this one. It says simply this, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Wow. It's quite a promise. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will open the word to us today. That we might understand that in this day we're living, when fear is on every hand, that we have a command. And that command is a clear command from you. But you didn't just command us something blindly. You gave us reasons for it. And we ask, Lord, today that we will be able to grasp that truth in Christ's name. Amen. Churchill said one day, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is one of the biggest weapons that Satan uses on the church. And one of the biggest weapons that he uses on believers is this thing called fear. And we have gone through a time of two-year period of the pandemic when fear was instilled everywhere. And someone said to the Amish, you don't seem to be as afraid. They said, we don't have television. You see, fear is something that is contagious. It will move throughout a group of people or a group of animals. Horses have this strange uh, gifting. If you're having a nervous breakdown, they want to have one too. And if this horse is going to get startled, this horse doesn't know why, but he's going to get startled too. Some of you have heard me tell when Becky and I were married, I said, I would really like to have you learn to ride with me. And she was very willing and said, okay. And one day, Tom and I are out riding, and all of a sudden, his horse got scared to death of a pile of sand and just literally exploded under him. Well, my horse, King, had no idea what the problem was, but he said, if you're scared, I'm scared too. And he exploded. And when I got stopped, my foot was on top of the saddle and I'm hanging over here in space. And I thought, if that was Becky, she'd be on the ground. And I came home and said, I don't think you want to ride. And she was very glad about that. I have seen fear as it grips people. I've had it grip my own heart. You've heard of the time when I was riding Dusty, and he had been my faithful horse. I knew him well. We played together, rode together. He was just, he was an amazing horse. But I heard that he had become wild. I thought that was ridiculous. I went up and I said, that surely because the kid doesn't know how to ride because he had thrown him. So I caught him, got on his back, settled into the saddle. He was perfectly fine until I touched him with my heel, and he exploded. And he began to kiss his hind feet. And if you know anything about the anatomy of a horse, if his head and his hind feet are together, you're way up there someplace. And I was way up there, and every time he came down, I'd slap his ears and say, stop that. And trying to ride this out, and nobody with a camera to catch it. That's my biggest regret. <laughs> because I gave a ride of a lifetime. And the next thing I knew, he went down and came straight up in front, and I realized he was throwing himself over backwards. And I pushed, and I hit the road first, and he landed on top of me. And I took him down into the plowed field because... You don't want to have that happen on a, on a pavement. And so I took him down a plowed field, and I said to my friend, you hold him. 
Well, I get on him. I had no fear at all. I got on his back and instantly him threw himself over backwards. I was off before he got a quarter of the way through it. I knew what he was doing. I was off standing there holding him. But my fear just roared through me. I was terrified. It changed my relationship with horses from then on. I had to learn to ride with fear. I loved to ride, and so I would not let the fear stop me. But every time a horse would act up, I would stiffen up. And if you know anything about a horse, when you're afraid, they're afraid. And as soon as I would stiffen up, my horse, whichever one it was, would begin to get antsy and begin to dance. And the more he danced, the scareder I got. It wasn't until one day at the farm show that some of my nerve came back into me. I am looking forward to riding this summer <laughs> without fear. But can I tell you, I say all of this just to say this. We are a people who are prone to be afraid. In fact, the Bible has to tell us 365 times, don't be afraid. 365 times, that's one for every day. 365 times, fear thou not, fear not, do not be afraid. This message comes over and over in the scripture that we'll read today. Can you imagine the situation? Moses has been the leader of Israel. He has been the man who has literally stretched out his rod and the Red Sea is opened under him. He is now about to discover something. For Joshua, God speaks and says, Joshua, my servant, is dead. Can I tell you what happened? Joshua had been fearless while Moses was alive. While Moses was with him, Joshua knew that Moses could do anything. He was not afraid. And then all of a sudden, God says, Joshua, Moses is dead. And it terrified him. You say, how do you know it terrified him? Because God speaks to him over and over in the next nine verses, saying, will you stop being afraid? Stop being afraid. Don't be afraid. Be of good courage. Be strengthened. I am with you. And God never has to tell that. Can I, can I say this? I never have to go up to somebody who knows no fear and tell them not to be afraid. You only tell people not to be afraid who are afraid. And God has to tell Joshua over and over and over, be strong, be of good courage, be not afraid. Because Moses has gone and Joshua now has the responsibility of the stiff-necked people who are constantly fighting against the leader until now Joshua realizes Moses doesn't stand between him and the people, but he stands between the people and God, and he's terrified. Well, here's what the word of the Lord says to us. God is speaking to Israel but the promise is just as true for you and I. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, fear not, number one, because I'm with you. Here's the reason not to be afraid. God says, wherever you are, I'll be there. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's the promise of God. But let me tell you, there are times when you will feel like God is not there. Is that right? There are times you will feel like God has left and you're all by yourself. But you have the promise of God who said, I will never leave you. I will be with you always, even till the end of the age. So the first thing that God says when he says, don't be afraid, is not, don't be afraid. You're stupid if you're afraid. That's not what he says. He says, don't be afraid because I am with you. Do you remember when you were a child and you were home and you were alone and the house got bigger and bigger 
You were little. Mommy wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. And you heard creaks and cracks. And it seemed like the house was moving. And you were afraid something was, something was there. And, and you became more and more afraid. And, and you know there's no reason to be afraid. But you're more afraid. And then all of a sudden the door opens. And your mother says, hi, honey, I'm here. The fear was all gone. It was all gone. Our daddy said, I'm here. The fear all evaporated. It was gone. That's what the Lord is saying to you. He's saying, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, don't be afraid because I am with you. And then he goes on to say, and I am your God. Now, we're not talking about, I I'm with you and I can do a few things. The one who says, I am, is with you. The one who says, I am, I can do all things. There is nothing that God cannot do. He can do all things. There is nobody stronger than God. There is no power stronger than God. There is no enemy stronger than God. Says, God says, don't be afraid because I am with you and I am your God. Wow, what an amazing thing to realize that the God of the universe says to me, I am with you. A man said to me yesterday on the phone, don't you just wish you could hear the heavens open and a voice come out of heaven saying, son, I am here. Wouldn't it be wonderful? You would never doubt if you could hear this voice coming out of the heavens like the Old Testament prophets did. But let me tell you a fact. Not everybody heard the voice of God like the Apostle Paul heard it when he was Saul of Tarsus. The heavens opened and a voice came from heaven, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Even the men that are with him heard the voice. I mean, that's, that's pretty real. I'm with you. But I'll tell you something, if you don't want to obey God, God could speak to you with a clear voice out of the heavens and you'd find an excuse for not believing him because it's they that will do the will of God that will know the truth. And if you don't want to do the will of God, and I said to this person that I was talking to, if you heard a voice out of the heavens, it would not change you one bit because you have God's word and God has spoken to you over and over. Yeah, but I, I never know for sure it's him. I said, the reason you don't know it's for sure that it's him is because when he's talked to you, you haven't obeyed. And when you don't obey, you give excuses to yourself and say, well, it really wasn't God that was talking to me. I said, when God speaks to you right out of his word, it's the voice of God and it's as clear to you as if he spoke with a loud voice out of the heavens. And God does speak and God speaks to our heart. And we know Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you're a follower of Christ, you hear his voice, and you learn to recognize that voice. Somebody sitting right beside you may not hear it. More than likely don't, but you hear it because God speaks in his own special way. I can't tell you how you'll know, but I can tell you this, you'll know. You'll know that it's God. I am your God. And then he says, I will strengthen you. I'm going to make you strong. Now, just in case you're wondering here, look at who he's talking to. In verse 14, it says this, Fear not, you worm, Jacob. Fear not, you worm, Jacob. Now, do you know anything that's more defenseless than a worm? We've caught worms all of our life, put them on fish hooks, and thrown them out to the fish. Have you ever been bitten by a worm? Have you ever had a worm attack you? God says, Jacob, you're a worm, but I'm, going, I'm telling you, I'm with you. He says, you're a worm. You have no strength in and of yourself, but I tell you, I'm going to strengthen you. Look at what he says. Fear not, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord. 
and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new thrashing sledge with sharp teeth. Doesn't sound like a worm to me, does it you? Wow. It says, you will thrash the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff, and you shall winnow them. The wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Ha! Huh. If you feel like a worm, totally defenseless, here's the promise to you. God says, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to give you strength that you don't have. I'm going to give you power that you don't have. You, you're a worm, yes, but remember, I made the worm, and I can remake it, and I can remake you, and I can make you into a strong and courageous one that will have no reason to fear whatsoever. He says, I'm going to, I'm going to do something for you because I'm going to strengthen you. And then he says, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm, I'm not going to leave you on your own. When you've got a battle to fight, I'm going to be there with you and I'm going to help you fight the battle. The battle is not yours, the Bible says, but it's God's. Do you ever stop to realize when you're faced with a battle, it's his battle. It's his battle. And he's going to, he's going to fight the battle for you. He says, I will strengthen you. I'm going to help you. And I'm going to uphold you. I'm going to hold you up with the right hand of my righteousness. What an utter amazing promise to God's people in the day that we're living in, when all of a sudden we are being inundated with all kinds of things that we're supposed to be afraid of. Get some backbone. Get some guts. And realize, I don't have to be afraid because the Lord my God is with me. He will help me. He will lift me up. He will make me strong. He will make me an overcomer. I do not have to be beaten down. I do not have to be filled with fear. Can I tell you this? Initial fear you may have no control over. I am not afraid of my wife. Pete may say I should be. <laughs> but I'm not afraid of my wife. But there are times she scares me to death. I'll be sitting at the organ playing away. I won't know she's in the room. And all of a sudden she'll say something. I nearly jump off the organ bench. <laughs> my heart's pounding. But the moment I see her, that fear is gone. Why? I'm not afraid of her. The sudden fear is only of the unknown. And sudden fear may grip your heart and you may wonder, where in the world did that come from? But understand this. He says, I am with you. You do not have to be afraid. There is nothing that can come against you that is stronger than God. Nothing. There's nothing that can come against you that the power of God is not already the master of. Jesus has already defeated every enemy. We do not have to go down in defeat. Even though the enemy may make us feel like a worm, rise up, worms, and say, I'm growing teeth, and I'm not afraid. I refuse to be afraid, because the Lord is with me. My God is with me. He said, I, He will strengthen me. He said, He will help me. He said, He will hold me up with His righteous right hand. I will not be afraid. Sudden fear may grip you, but the Bible is very clear. Do not be afraid of sudden fear. Do not be afraid of sudden fear. Remember, it's the unknown that mostly causes us the fear. And when we can realize nothing is unknown to God, He knows everything. No power of darkness will ever come against you that God is not fully aware of and totally able and capable of overcoming it. And so I will say in my heart, I will not be afraid. I will be an overcomer because God has promised to the overcomer wonderful things. 
Wonderful things to the overcomer. The enemy tries to beat you down in fear. Say, oh no, I'm rising up in faith. I'm rising up in faith. I refuse. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying unto you, fear not, I will help you. The promise is to you and to your children and to their children and to every generation and to every believer. God says, fear not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And you and I can walk in absolute victory. Would you stand with me, please? Our Father, we thank you we thank you that we do not have to live in fear. When fear comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Father, fear is of the enemy. You have said in your word, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so, Lord, we claim today overcoming faith. We claim today the ability to overcome fear. We claim today from you that knowledge that you are with us. In Jesus' name. How many by the up to today would say, Pastor Dick, the Spirit of God really spoke to my heart through this. I, I've been battling fear, and, and I, I want you to know I've heard what God has said this morning. Yes, I see those hands, yes, yes. Fear is on every hand, but God is closer than the fear. Because he said, behold, I am in you. I am in you. I am with you. I will strengthen you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak against that spirit of fear that would come against believers. I speak against that spirit of fear that would cause us to stumble. And I command that spirit of fear to leave by the authority of the blood of Christ. Because Jesus, you are the great overcomer and we can overcome in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you are the victor. You are the victor in Jesus' name. If you're here this morning, you'd like special prayer. The altar's open. We invite you to come and believe God to meet that need that you have. Because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. May God bless you as you go. Go in the strength of the Lord, knowing this, I have nothing to fear but fear itself. And thank God. Fear is already defeated on the cross. Amen.